So now that we know what sex chromosomes are, let's take a look at the following example that deals with genetics and the Punnett square. So suppose a colorblind male, so a hemizygous recessive male, has a child with a heterozygous normal female. Now in part A, what is the probability that the child is colorblind? In part B, what is the probability that the child is male and colorblind? In part C, if the child is female, what is the probability that she is normal? And in part D, if the couple has two children, what is the probability that both of them are normal? Now, before we actually examine A through D, let's determine what the genotype is of each one of our parents. So let's begin with the heterozygous normal female. Now remember, the female contains two X sex chromosomes. So let's designate those X sex chromosomes with the following picture. So we have the first X sex chromosome and the second X chromosome. So we have an X and we have an X. Now we're going to use X with a blue uppercase C subscript, superscript, to basically describe the gene found on the X chromosome that codes for the normal color vision. So we have normal color vision. On the other hand, we're going to use X, lowercase red C, as the superscript to basically describe the gene that codes for color blindness. Now, because we're dealing with a heterozygous female individual, that means one of the X chromosomes will carry the normal gene, the other one will carry the blind, the colorblind gene. So one of these will be uppercase blue, so let's fill this in as blue, so this is our gene. And the other one will be lowercase c, so let's draw this in with red. Now, what about the colorblind male? Well, unlike the female, the male only contains one X chromosome. The other one is the Y chromosome, and only the X chromosome actually carries this colorblind gene. And so what that means is only one of the sex chromosomes, namely the X chromosome, will carry that gene for this particular trait. The Y chromosome doesn't actually carry anything. And that's exactly why this X will get the red lowercase c because the person is colorblind and the Y doesn't actually get anything because the Y chromosome doesn't actually contain that particular gene. Okay, so now we know what the layout is. Now we know what the genotypes of these individuals are let's actually carry out the mating process. So when these mates, before they actually mate, each one of these produce sex cells. The heterozygous normal female produces two types of X cells. The colorblind male produces two types of sperm cells. So basically we have replication taking place, then meiosis take place, takes place, and at the end, we produce two types of X cells. One X cell contains this chromosome. The other type of X cell contains this chromosome. So if this row describes our X cells, then both of these X cells will carry the X chromosome. One of it will be normal, so uppercase blue C, and the other one will be uh, colorblind, so lowercase c. So let's suppose that this is the female X cells right here. So these are the female X cells. Let's suppose that these right here are the male sperm cells, okay? And so in the process of meiosis, when these segregate and at the end we form our haploid sperm cells, one sperm cell type will contain the X chromosome with the lowercase c, the red c, so let's suppose this is our X chromosome, and the other sperm cell will simply contain the Y. 
So now let's actually carry out the Punnett square. Let's complete the Punnett square. So when this sperm cell combines with this X cell to produce the zygote, the zygote will have two X's. And what that means is we're going to have a female. Now, this female will be heterozygous normal, and that's because we're going to have that dominant blue C that will inhibit that recessive red C. Now, what about this sperm cell combining with this X cell? Once again, we're going to have a female, but now that female will be colorblind because we have two lowercase red C's. Now, what if the Y, the sperm cell, combines with this X cell? So now we produce a male because we have an XY, and this male will be normal. Why? Well, because that X chromosome will carry that normal color vision given by uppercase blue C. This one will also be male, Y, and an X, but we're going to have lowercase red C, and so that means this individual will be colorblind, just like this colorblind parent. So now that we have the pun and square, let's go to A, B, C, and Z, and let's begin with A. Now, before we jump to A, notice that we have four individual cases, and each one of these cases and each one of these cases has equal likelihood of taking place. So we have a 25% chance of this event taking place, a 25% chance of this event taking place, a 25% chance here, and a 25% chance here. And together, if we add up these uh, likelihoods, we get 100%. So it's 100% likelihood that we're going to have a child. Now, in part A, what is the probability that the child is colorblind? And we don't care if the child is male or female. We simply want to know what is the probability that he or she is colorblind. Well, out of these four cases, two of these cases produce a colorblind individual. So case number one, this colorblind female, and case number two, this colorblind male. Both of these cases are normal. So that means two out of four children or two out of four cases produce a colorblind individual. And we know that two out of four is the same thing as 0.5. And so that means we have a 50% chance that the child will actually be colorblind. Now, what is the probability that the child is not only colorblind, but also male? And what that means is we want to look at that square that contains a male and that male is colorblind. And the case that we want to look at is this square right here. So we have only one of these four squares satisfies condition B, where we have a male and that male is actually colorblind. And so we have a one-fourth chance, which is equivalent to 0 0.25, which is equivalent to 5th or 25%. Let's move on to C. So if the child is a female, so we begin part C by assuming that the child is in fact a female. The question is, knowing that the child is a female, what is the probability that she is normal? So now because we know that the child is female, the only thing we want to look at is this square and this square. We don't want to consider these two squares because they contain the Y chromosome and that means they are male. So what is the probability, so given that the child is male, so these two boxes, or the child is female, these two boxes, what is the probability that she is normal? Well, by normal, we mean they are not colorblind. So she's not colorblind, and that means this case is she is normal, this case is she is colorblind, and so we have one out of two cases is colorblind, or one out of two cases is normal. So that means one over two, because only one of these cases produces a normal individual within these female cases. So that is equivalent to uh, point 0 0.5, which is equivalent to 50%. And finally, let's do part D. So in part D, 
if the couple has two children, what is the probability that they are both normal? So we have child number one and child number two. So let's begin with child number one. What is the probability that child number one, so let's say child number one, is normal? Well, the, prob <coughs> the probability is 50%, as we saw in case A. So we saw that there's a 50% likelihood that the child is colorblind, which means it is a 50% likelihood that the child is normal. So child one is normal with a 50% likelihood. And this is equivalent to 0.5. Now, what about child number two? Well, likewise, there's a 50% likelihood by the same exact reasoning that child number two is normal and that means we have a 0.5 likelihood. Now because these two events are actually, they do not depend on one another, they're, uh, they're independent, what that means is to calculate the actual probability we have to multiply these two out. This is known as the product law. So if we multiply 0.5 by 0.5 we get 0.25 which means there is a 25% likelihood that if these two individuals have two children, that both of those children will actually be normal. So this is basically how you use the sex chromosomes and the Punnett square to determine different types of probability values in these types of genetic problems.